Hey, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hope you're having a good day wherever you're at today. <clears throat> I had to go grab my coffee, and um, so we're running a little bit behind, but thank you guys for joining us, and I want to talk to you this morning, especially if you're one of these people, one of these people, I think all of us have some concerns, that are a little stressed over the election and um, the results and all this is coming that we know uh, we're going to find out here shortly the direction of our country and it's a very um, perilous time you know the Bible says in the last days will be perilous times so that's dangerous dangerous times we live in and there's all kind of wars and there's all kind of things going on around the world but you know what the Bible says that there'll be wars and pestilence and disease and all these things will be going on before the return of Jesus Christ. So I think sometimes we we forget that we are living in a very prophetic time when the Bible has is fulfilling itself, has fulfilled itself, and is continuously we're seeing things just open up to us. So I I want you to be I don't want I don't want you to be stressed and I don't want you to be um, burdened. And, you know, if you can't really watch the media and not get that way, because 
it's such a divided, um, divisive time. Uh, we've got people coming out of the woodwork to support this person. Somebody's coming out to support that person. And it's very divisive in the way things are. And I, I'm going to say that this has nothing to do with my devotion. And maybe I'm, Lord, don't let me get out of line. But I want to say this. It's a, it's a daggum shame. A shame that people that are not citizens of our country, it's, that it's even up for discussion that they can have a vote. That's a shame. That, that's a disgrace. There's no reason. They should allow anybody that's not a citizen, not an American citizen, to have a vote, period. I don't say that as being, uh, trying to be political. It's just common sense. You know, they talk about election interference. That's election interference right there. When you let non-citizens come in and, and have a potential, maybe they could cast a vote. It's just, anyway, that's, that's just me talking. That's not what the Lord's laid on my heart. But I, I've got the concerns you got. I got, I've got the I see things too, and it's just, it's overwhelming sometimes, and it, it, it really can make you mad. I'm just going to be honest with you and get you to a place where you're like, what, what, what the heck's wrong with our country and the leadership of our country? And look, I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's bad on both sides. You got one side that's gone completely off the deep end, completely out there in the left field, and the, the morality is, there is no morality. It's just satanic and demonic. That, that's just the best where they're at. Talking about, talking about the, the, Democratic Party, they're just completely gone off the rails. But then you've got the Republican Party that whines and says, we're going to do this, we're going to do it, and they never do nothing. They never do nothing. Oh, we're going to, they you never do nothing. So there's really no accountability, okay? That's how, that's how, it, that's where I'm at. That's, that's what I see. I see a runaway situation. And because of that, there are times when, I get stressed out, and there's times when I say, man, this is just ridiculous, and, I, and the same things that you say. But we, what we have to do is center ourselves and come back to what God has said. Because if we don't stay close to God in, these, in the last days that we live in, these dark times, these perilous times, then we're going to get caught up in the rhetoric. We're going to get caught up in all the, the things that the devil is throwing and deceptions, you're going to get caught up in it. So that's what I want to do. I want to center us today. If you got your Bibles, go to Daniel, the second chapter. Daniel, the second chapter. And good morning to everybody. Please post where you're watching from. I'm going to wait just a minute, let you get your Bibles. Daniel, the second chapter. Daniel, the second chapter. Good morning, Trevor, West Virginia. Hey, Chad. Good morning, Robert. Good morning, Michelle in Missouri. Appreciate you guys watching. Got your Bibles turned to Daniel the second chapter and also James the fourth chapter. Daniel the second chapter and James the fourth chapter. Good morning, Gerald, Louisiana. Harry and Mary, good morning, neighbors. Good morning, Louisiana. Chad, good morning, Mary in Indiana. Good morning. George is in the house. Good morning, Amanda. Copenhagen, New York. Good morning, Cindy. Good morning, Tanya and Garner, Chris and Decatur. Good morning. Bobby and Sherry in Kentucky. Good morning. Hey, Janet Benson. Livingston, Texas. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it makes me mad too, Shirley, but look, we're going to get some deliverance from that today. If we'll, if we'll focus on the Word of God and what the Bible says, there's no reason to be concerned, and, and I know that sounds like a cliche, but it's the truth. Good morning, Sydney and Sneeds Ferry. All right. Sneeds Ferry. Carthage, good morning. Lamp Pate, good morning. Clark Wilson, Eastover, good morning. Good morning. Hey, TJ, good morning. Fort Worth. Hey, Lori. Man, we're getting around. Okay, good morning. Praise God. Praise God for the places that we're reaching this morning. All right, so you're stressed over the election. Gainesville, Georgia, Barry, are they stressed over the election there? People are stressed. People are worried. People are concerned. You got actors coming out. Well, they've been coming out. Hey, hey, Becky, we gave that generator to a man that needed it. Glenn's going to tell you, Becky donated a generator for us to take with all the supplies and let me just say that I, I want this a good story. We're, 
uh, Becky is on here. She donated a generator for us to take with a bunch of coats and things that we had for Western North Carolina. Well, my friend Glenn, he had the enclosed trailer, and he went off with the coats and generator toward Burnsville while we were serving food and, and uh, between Spruce Pines and Bakersfield. And he came back. He's like, man, I give the coats out. And, and he said, but uh, I was talking to this guy. And I said, do you need anything? You need a heater? Do you need a coat? And he goes, no, man, I don't. But my neighbor really needs a generator. And he said, well, I'm about to hook you up. He goes, you're kidding. He says, no. Nah. He said, we, I got one right here. So he takes the generator out and gives it to the guy. Said the guy went Pentecostal on him. I said, what do you mean? He said, he just went to praising God and having a big time. And I was like, I said, man, that's awesome. So the generator was supposed to go there, Becky. God bless you. God bless you guys. All right. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 20. Daniel chapter 2. Verse 20. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his and he changes the times and the seasons he removeth kings and he setteth up kings he giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding he revealeth the deep secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him now I've said this before and I'm gonna say it again I 100% believe that the two, the situation we're in, I'm not trying to be mean, I ain't trying to hurt nobody's feelings, but I believe, this is my opinion, this is my opinion, based on what I see and what I think and sense in my spirit, the judgment of God is on America. I don't think we're the only country under judgment. I don't think we're special, okay? I don't think God, that he, we're special to God. I know a lot, a lot of us like to think that, but we're not. We're, God is no respecter of persons. He loves uh, Bangladesh. He loves India. He loves Japan. He loves, God. for God so loved the world, okay? But what made America unique was when we were founded on Judeo-Christian values. But that, No matter how liberal or how left you try to go on that, it's just a fact. They can't, they, they will deny it, but they're, it's just denying fact. We were founded on Judeo-Christian values. This was a country based on Christian values. And we were a blessed country. And we were prospering. And we were making a difference in the world once we started going, sending missionaries out. And all this is documentable. It's fact, factual, all of it. What made America great was we were a God-fearing nation. Now, America is no longer a God-fearing nation. We are no longer known that way. Now, you, you say, well, well, I don't agree with that because over here in my town, well, in your little small town you might be, but if you'll get out of your small town and move around a little bit, you'll find out. There's many people don't even know the gospel. They don't, they don't even know who, they don't under, they've never heard it, and that's hard to believe. And you say, well, I don't know about that because we've got all these Christian TV shows and blah, blah, blah. They're not hearing the true gospel. They're hearing um, a worldly gospel. They're hearing a, um, a, a false gospel. And so these huge movements of, of, of Christian TV shows and all this stuff, not all of them, but I'm going to say 99.9 .9 probably, they're in it for self-gain, they're in it for money, they're in it to make merchandise of you. And the Bible says that that will happen. They, they will want to make merchandise of you. They want to make money off of you. And so what you have now in, a, in our country is you have people that look at Christianity as hypocritical and fake, and just a bunch of people that just want to have a social gathering and convince themselves that they're okay and they circle the wagons to protect themselves and, and they, they kind of like bury their heads in the sand and they, they're, they're dogmatic about this and that, but the truth is they, they don't want to help nobody and they're, they're not really showing Christ to nobody. And it was even Gandhi, I think Gandhi that said that um, he admires Jesus and something like he looks up, he admired Jesus, but he doesn't see Jesus. He doesn't see Christians being like Jesus or something like that. My point is this. We are in a situation in our country where it really doesn't matter 
Now listen to me. Who the president's going to be when it comes to the morality of our country. D Trump's not going to make this a moral country. Okay, he might make your economy better. He, he might make a safer as far as um, the, the threats in, in the world, and I believe that. I do. He certainly um, proved that he can do that already, right? But the morality that of our country, the fallen nature of our country, can only be fixed or only be impacted by the gospel. If it wasn't for that, there would be no salvation. There would be no way for people to, to know the true, the true God. And because that's not being perpetuated like it used to be, I believe, and, and because people are not heralding the gospel and taking it outside the four walls of a building, and because the people that are watching on TV are seeing people that are compromised, a lot of them, they're not really hearing it. And so we have a, a lukewarm Christianity at best, and everybody's focused on the, 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 the election. Well, it's going to take a man, a president, to change this country. Listen, again, 100% believe that uh, we need somebody that can protect, or that can lead and protect us from, from outside forces. We need somebody that can definitely help the economy. We need somebody that's going to be on the side of morality that we as Christians believe, right? 100% feel that way, believe that way. However, that's not going to impact the morality of our country. Only when we turn to God in repentance and we confess our sins will he forgive us and cleanse us from unrighteousness. See, we're, we're neglecting him. And we've been doing that for a long time. And there's been warnings sent. There's been different things sent our way. And so now we are facing the judgment of God. And whether you want to hear what I'm about to say or not, I just read it to you. God appoints kings and kingdoms. He makes the decision. I'm not telling you we shouldn't vote and all that. I'm not saying that. I believe God works through his sovereign ways is the way he works. I mean, I'm telling you that God can do whatever he wants to do when he wants to do it. When a man can turn his head like this, giving a speech, and a bullet just clip his ear, that's the hand of God. Now, you can believe what you want to believe. God's protection is, 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 is being revealed, and, he, and his, he's got things that he is doing. But when it comes down to it, the stress in your life and, and the, the worry in your life about this election is not what God wants. In. God wants us to trust him. He wants us to know that no matter what the situation ends up being, he's always in control. And if you claim to be a Christian today, you claim to be a follower of Christ, then why are you getting so worked up? Why are you getting so bent out of shape? Because when it comes down to it, it's God's responsibility to lead this world up to a time that he calls the judgment, not ours. We can't change anything. The only thing that we're responsible for, what he's told us to do, is to go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. To, it's always been about souls. It's not about the economy. It's not about the wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and disease and all that. It's about souls. It's always going to be about that with God. Now, God's agenda and our agenda are two different things a lot of time. Over in James, I want to read this to you. James chapter, James chapter 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore, he saith, God resist the proud, but give grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted in mourning, weep. Let your laughter be turned into mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Speak no evil, one of another, brethren. He that speaketh evil of his brother and judgeth his brother, speaketh evil of the law and judgeth the law. But if thou judge the law, thou art not a doer of the law, but a judge. There is one lawgiver who is able to save and to destroy who art thou to judge us another? God is going to set them down. God is going to have the final say. The Bible says every knee will bow 
every tongue will fast, confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. There's nothing done in dark that will not be brought to light. We, this world is not out of control. This world is on a direct collision course with that day. The Bible calls it that day, the judgment day. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. My job as a child of God on this planet is not to run around promoting any candidate, not to run around trying to, make, trying to promote an election. My job is to call out the truth, to speak the truth, to stand on the word of God, to be bold, and lift up Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Only when I get sidetracked, only when I get in the flesh and I get I get mad and I say, man, this is, this is insane, this is crazy, that I start losing my joy, I start losing my peace, and I don't feel that closeness to God. But he says, if I draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to me. And the way we draw nigh to God is we come to him humbly. He gives grace. And God wants you and I today to walk in victory, to walk in peace and joy, no matter what the situation is in your life, or no matter what's going on around the world, and realize this, above all things, God is faithful. God is in control. There is nothing that can stop what he's going to do. There's nothing that can hinder what he's going to do. He is the creator of all things. He is the one that lifts up a standard against the enemy. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the, the Spirit of the Lord lifts up a standard against him. There, there's nothing that can happen to you or me that God doesn't know about before it happens, and that's just the way it is. So whatever you're dealing with today, whatever stress you're dealing with, your favorite um, actor or singer or whoever's come out and are supporting this person, that person, and or um, there's people that are uh, friends, friendships are being divided and lost because of political views and all this stuff. That's not pleasing to God. I, I get it. I get it. I understand it. I understand how you so because I'm, I'm one of these people who say there's no way, no way you can be a Christian and vote in support of abortion and gay marriage and all these other, there's no way. Uh, transgender, there's no way. Now, and I stand on that. You know why I can stand on that? Because that's the word of God. We, we, we stand on the truth of God's word. And if you have the spirit of God in you, you have conviction. You're going to, you're going to have some conviction in your life. But if you have no conviction and you're, you, there's, then, then why are you even playing the game? Why are you pretending you're, you're not walking with the Lord? However, Jesus loved those that were unlovable. Jesus went to those that nobody wanted anything to do with. Jesus touched the leper, the one that you're not even supposed to be within, I think, 10 feet of that person because of catching leprosy. Not only would Jesus heal them, but he would touch them. He let them know, look, I love you. That your sickness, this disease, is, is not greater than my love for you. And the same is true for you. Your sickness, your disease, your sin, whatever it is, is not greater than God's love for you. And that same love that he gives us, we're supposed to have for one another. And there's no way you're going to be able to win somebody to Christ or be to represent Jesus Christ or Christ, the light of Jesus shine through us if we're bickering and fighting and arguing over politics or judging one another. And I just read you, there's only one lawgiver. There's only one judge. Let him judge. Let God judge deal with their heart. Let God convict them. Let God bring them to a place of repentance. Our job is to love them. How do you love them, David? <clears throat> Tell them about Christ. Tell them about Jesus. Share the word of God with them in love. They probably won't receive it, probably don't want to hear it. But you're doing your part to say, look, I care about your soul. Because listen, whoever the president is, However great the economy gets or however bad the economy gets and however the world goes and whatever goes on, there's coming a day when you and I and everybody on this planet are going to die and stand before God. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. So that's eternal. That's forever. You're, you're going to live forever somewhere, heaven or hell. That's a fact. And where somebody goes out into eternity is more important than who the daggum president is, more important than, than the economy. It's more important than anything. Jesus said, Jesus, 
the one that died for you on a cross and rose again, he said, what would it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? In other words, you can have the whole world just like you want it. You can have everything just like you want it. Economy's great. Everything's wonderful. Everybody's doing good, prospering. Would you sell your soul for that? Would you give your soul for that? Because Jesus, Jesus said your soul is worth more than all of that. Don't sell out. Don't fall into this trap of the enemy. If he can make us full of hate and deception or get us to a place of being hateful and deceptive, and, and, and some, some are deceptive and some are just being hateful, if he can get us to the place of division that where we can't share the gospel, we can't show the love of God to each other, then he's winning. He's winning this fight. This fight. You say, what fight are you talking about? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds is what the devil sets up in people's lives. Hatred, unforgiveness, envy, strife, division, murder, lying. All these things are of Satan. And he does these things to create strongholds in our lives. So we can't help one another. We can't bear one another's burdens. We can't, we can't show the love of Christ because we're so bound up in strongholds. And those have to be broken in our lives. We can't. We can't serve God and serve ourselves, serve the world. The Bible says if we love the world or we're with the world, we're enemy to God. So that's why we have to be careful and we have to be vigilant. We have to understand these things, this, this, this bitterness, this anger, this, this, this hatred, this building toward other people because of their, their views that we view as just ignorant or stupid or wicked, whatever, those People very well may be wicked and very well may be ignorant, and, and who knows? I mean, but the, the truth is, my peace and my joy doesn't come from them. It comes from God. And if the devil can get me a stronghold in my life to separate me from being able to have the peace and love of God, then I'm useless. I'm useless in the spirit world <clears throat> for the Lord. We battle spiritual wickedness in high places. That's that's what we're fighting. What we're seeing in this country is spiritual warfare. 100%. That's what we're dealing with. There are families that are um, breaking apart because of what's going on in the country. There are friendships that are being torn apart. There are races that are even being more divided. We've got invasion. We've got all kind of stuff. I mean, we got all kind of stuff going on. There's wars, Israel's, uh, and what's going on in the Middle East is is ramping up more and more. There's all kind of stuff coming going on. The Bible says, when you see all these things, look up. Don't look down. Don't look out. Look up. Look up because your redemption is drawing nigh. If I didn't believe it, if I weren't going to stand on it, then I don't need to be on here. And I don't need to be going around preaching this because this tells me how it ends and who the winner already is. God has already won this war. He's allowing us to fight little battles on the way to the to the victory party. You've a, a child of God, you can't lose. You can't you can't die. You've already been you've already dead died in Christ. You're really, you're, you're eternally saved. You're you're with God. You're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. As far as God's concerned, you're his. And he didn't leave you here to bicker and fight over politics. He left us here, put us here to shine, to be the light of this world, the salt of the earth. And when people look at us, they can say there's something different about that person. I don't know what it is, but there's something about them. And they, and they want to know more about it. And you know what that is? That's the Spirit of God in us. I'm not, I, hope, I hope that you understand I'm not being hard on you and I, or me, and I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just trying to warn you that part of the deception of the last day, the last day deception is to divide people to a place where you, you, won't, even, you, you, you won't even care enough to tell somebody about God, how much he loves them. You'd rather just see them drop off into hell. I mean, that's that's how angry we can get. And that's what that, the devil's pushing that. The devil's in the media. He's in he's in all kind of places. 
He's got a stronghold. But one place he don't have a stronghold, my friend, is right here. And if you want to know the truth, you read the Word of God. If you want to walk in the truth, you walk in the Word of God. Thank you, Lord, for all your many blessings. Thank you for your love and your mercy and grace. And, Lord, I have felt, I just I want to say this so they'll hear it. I felt oppressed during this video. I can feel the, I can literally feel the oppression of the enemy because, Lord, I know that he, we are completely hitting on his stronghold. Lord, I just pray that you break chains, break uh, division, these things between family and friends. And, Lord, us that are saved and know the truth and can see the truth and are not blind to what the devil is doing, may we not come with a judgmental, angry spirit, but may we come with the same spirit of Christ, the Holy Spirit, with love, truth, compassion, love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And you receive all the glory. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.